there Windowers and welcome to this week's Windows on Windows live stream. Why do I always say this week? Because it's every fortnight, but you know what I mean. So welcome to the stream. Thank you for being here. I have my chat here as usual, so I can see we've got about 28 people at the moment. So thank you for joining. Hi guys, how are we all doing? Have you all had a good week so far? Dominic, I was hoping that no one noticed the camera flash. I have no idea why OBS decided to do that, but let's go with it anyway. I have no idea. So, yep. Hi, Gareth. Hi, Still Lean P. Good to see you guys again. Flame Point says I'm doing good. I am glad to hear that. Orbitron says all of my devices are also on Windows 11. Perfect. How's that going? Have you got any massive bugs or any horrible problems or is that all going okay? Supercars, hi. Thanks for joining. So yeah, as you can see, this week we're going to be doing things a little bit differently. So the last few live streams, we've been looking at builds for Windows 11. So that's just because the way it's worked out, Microsoft have been releasing the builds basically at the perfect time for us to have a look at them. So obviously I know we've done quite a few Windows 11 stream, like specific streams recently. I'm going to do it a like a little bit more of a general stream this week. We are going to talk about Windows 11. We're going to talk about build 22,000.100 that came out a few days ago. So we will discuss that. Um, um, the only reason that I've not dedicated the whole stream to that build is literally because there are there are only a few changes. So it, 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 like if we did that, it would have been maybe, you know, half an hour. So I just thought in terms of making it a little bit more interesting, a little bit longer, we would have a look at a few things. So yeah, well, definitely, if, you have, if you're here for Windows 11, don't panic. We will discuss that. And I do want to actually have a look at something else that I found that's related to Windows 11. So that will definitely happen first. And then after that, we're going to be having, hopefully, fingers crossed that nothing breaks or goes horribly wrong. We're going to be having a look at um, some Linux stuff. And why not? So actually little wow fact for you this will be the first time on the channel that we have looked at linux it's not however the first time that we will have looked at a non-windows operating system because if you have watched the windows xp series you may remember that i did a bonus episode on react os which is not linux but neither is it windows so there you go two little wow facts for you uh so yeah yeah sky exactly something will probably break and go horribly wrong because it always does but you know let's just just in case let's just it, it could be the first time that that doesn't happen so yeah thanks for being here so let's how about start with our windows 11 stuff so i'm still getting used to my stream deck but hopefully i'm not gonna look you're just gonna see something blow up now obviously let's go hopefully to my screen i hope that you can actually see this there we go. Oh, look at that. I didn't break anything. Not so far. Perfect. Okay, so as you can see, and I'm sure you guys probably know this already, on the 22nd of July, so about a week ago, we got build 22,000.100 of Windows 11. And actually, why am I not on the screen? Can I bring myself here? Can I do that? Yes, there we go. Okay, yeah, sorry about that. Let's try again. So yeah, we got this uh, latest insider build of Windows 11. Now, this came out initially to the dev channel, and I'm going to just take a wild guess and assume that most, if not all of you guys that are here, are probably running this build in some way or have installed this build, you know, in a VM or on a second computer and you know all about it. But just in case anyone doesn't know, this came out about a week ago, like I said, to the dev channel. And there are only a few changes, although interestingly, I think it was a couple of days ago, this actually then got pushed to the beta channel. So that means that this is actually the first beta build of Windows 11 that has gone to the beta channel. So uh, yeah, let's have a quick look anyway at what's changed. So like I said, it's only really a few things. I think the main one that people were focusing on is that we now have the Microsoft Teams integration. So um, yeah, you can see their first bullet point here. We've started rolling out chat from Microsoft Teams to insiders in the dev channel. Not everyone, however, will see it right away. So actually, question for people that are running this build, because I've not actually installed this yet. Have you actually got the new Teams feature? Has anyone got that? And if so, how is that? Is it running okay or have we got bugs or what's going on with that? And while I'm waiting for you to fill me in, I'm just going to pour my tea. So yeah, we've gone back to uh, normal British summer and uh, normal British summer, for those of you that don't live in Britain, is um, usually rainy and cold. So yeah, I don't actually have any Pepsi this week. I've gone back to my tea because we're now back on 14 degrees, which is, yeah, it's a little bit chilly. Because we're now back on 14 degrees, which is, yeah, it's a little bit chilly. 
Ah, okay, so Xeno has corrected me here. The team's rollout actually started on previous builds. Oh, is that right? Is that right? Why have they put that on this blog post then? Why is it here? Is this just like an unrelated thing that they just put here? I don't know. So Gareth says, yes, I have the team's integration and it's okay. Gum says the issue I have with teams is that the branding still feels too businessy. It's interesting you say that because I saw some screenshots of it and I thought it was quite, um, what's the word? I thought it was quite like friendly. I thought, I don't know. I thought the graphics were quite friendly. I thought it fitted in nice with like, you know, like the new emojis that they're, that they're bringing to Windows 11. I thought it fitted in nice with that sort of look. Could just be me though. Ah, okay, so thanks again, Zeno. So the team's rollout, I'm going to correct this just in case no one can see the chat in the future. The team's rollout started after build 22,000.71, but they thought it would be better to post it in this change log. That's interesting. I mean, I guess it makes sense, doesn't it? Okay, right. So yeah, let's have a look at what else has changed here. Like I said, it's not a lot, so... Um, so, hidden icons flower on the lower right of the taskbar has been updated to match the new visuals of Windows 11. So again, they've got a screenshot here. This is talking about this little pop-out. So this is where all of your, like, overflow tray icons go. You know, the ones that you don't want visible all the time in the taskbar. This, up to this point, was just using, it was square, basically. It was just the Windows 10 style pop-out. But as you can see, they've given it round corners, so it fits in much better with Windows 11, which is good. And then if we go down here, we've got added the ability to quickly access focus assist settings directly from the notification area. So this is another minor change where you've now got this little option here in the notification area that you can click on to activate your or go to your focus assist settings. So again, like a very small change, but obviously I think a useful one. Um, and then we've got some taskbar changes. So when background activity from an app requires attention, the app will flash on the taskbar to get your attention. And I mean, this is not a new feature. Uh, in Windows 11, we've updated this design so that it still grabs your attention, but with a calming treatment. And this fits in a lot with what we've already seen that they changed in Windows 11. It's very calm, isn't it? It's very minimalist and calm. So think about the new system sounds, very calming, aren't they? Uh, so it minimizes the impact of unwanted distractions. The subtle flashing eventually stops and you will see a slightly red backplate and red pill under the app icon so yeah again you can see this in the little screenshot and again i like this it fits in like i've said with all of the other calming stuff that we've got in windows 11 love it what do we think about this So then carrying on with taskbar changes, we now have, I think it's a new icon for the touch keyboard, isn't it? So touch keyboard icon in the taskbar has been adjusted to be more consistent with the size of other icons in the corner of the taskbar. So yeah, small change to a taskbar icon. The calendar flyout now will fully collapse if you wish to have it collapse. Ooh, and we we may have died. Ah, I think we're back. I'll be back. Just let me know, guys. I'll be back. I think we died for a moment. Apologies about that. I think that was a problem on my end. I'll just give it a minute, and I'll just check that we're actually back. I'll be back. I think we are. Yeah, we're back. Yep, yeah, sorry about that, guys. I think that was a problem on my end, but we are back okay and then as usual we just got lots of little fixes so i was just talking about what's changed in the store in case you didn't get that it's basically new animations in the store and i was just asking again anyone that had used this build and used the new store how are you finding that because again i've not tried it myself and then literally as usual as you'd expect we've just got lots of fixes so and, and i mean you can see look there are loads there are loads of fixes in this build so this is a good sign right look at it I mean, that's a whole blog post by itself. So yeah, nice to see that, I think. Still, Lean P says the animation looks really cool. Flame Point hasn't used the store much. Uh, 
Oh, Gum says YouTube shut down. Really? The whole... Wow. That is uh, interesting. Tech, tech, and tech. Hello, thanks for being here. Okay, so, like I said, those are the changes that came in the latest Windows 11 build, which is why, again, I've not dedicated a whole live stream to that, because, I mean, that would have taken five minutes, right, to have looked at those changes. So, one other thing I did want to go over for Windows 11, and I don't remember whether I've shared this link anywhere, but I thought this was actually interesting to actually look at together here and maybe have a little chat about this. So, this is a blog post from Microsoft Design on Medium.com, and it, it's called Windows 11 Designing the Next Generation, Leveraging Customer Insights and Empathy to Create for a Billion People. So basically, in a nutshell, they're talking about, um, you know, the, the new Windows 11 visuals. And I just thought, I've not read it, but I've been meaning to read this for probably a couple of weeks. So I thought, why not have a look at this together now? So I just thought this was something interesting we could have a look at, again, related to Windows 11. Uh, so I'm just going to read this. Apologies if it gets boring, just let me know, but I'm going to read this. I think it will be interesting, but if it turns out to be really boring, I'll just stop and move on. So Windows has been with many of us as far back as we can remember. It has a rich 35 year history full of new experiences that showed us how computing can enrich our lives. Writing your first essay in Microsoft Word, drawing your first digital piece of art in Microsoft Paint, or perhaps writing your first line of code. Designing the next generation of Windows requires an understanding of the past, but what is more essential is a deep empathy for current and emerging human needs, and an understanding of how technology can support them. As we began our design journey for Windows 11, we examined how the world changed over the last 18 months. So they're talking about the impact of COVID, basically including ways in which the pandemic exposed unmet needs and accelerated new behaviours. More importantly, we talked to people about their dreams and aspirations so we could learn what drives them and what they need from their technology in order to achieve their goals. The designs for Windows 11 are steeped in this pointed focus on people, how computing can empower them and what they love. So actually, this is interesting, right? Because if you think about this, Think about the big picture here. If we, now I know the pandemic's been horrendous, right, in loads of ways, but if you think about this, Windows 11 has kind of come out of this, right? This this could be an actual really good thing that we've got because of what's been going on in the world in the last 18 months, right? So, I mean, if the pandemic didn't happen, then who's to say where Microsoft would have gone with this, right? We don't know whether they would have even, you know, um, uh, designed Windows 11 in exactly the same way, or whether they would have even come out with a new version of Windows. No idea, but it's interesting to think about, I think. Um, so yeah, I'm not going to read out everything here because it's just basically waffling about the same thing. So they're just saying that obviously they spoke to people and they wanted to make a new version of Windows that was relevant to, you know, how people used computers, uh, taking information from what they learned during the pandemic, which obviously for the computing industry was... I mean, I don't want to use the word good, but it was, you know, it was a positive time because lots of people went out and bought computers, obviously, to work from home. Um, so then they're saying this has been one of our most people driven releases ever and a guiding design principle was based on a key theme surfaced during research. Calm technology that makes our lives genuinely better. Calmness is, is much needed in today's world and it tends to hinge on our ability to feel in control, at ease and trustful. Windows 11 facilitates this through foundational experiences that feel familiar, soften formerly intimidating UI, and increase emotional connections. So this is interesting again because this is touching on things like I was talking about earlier, things like the new system sounds, which are very calming, right? They are calming. In fact, the whole UI has an air of calmness to it, doesn't it? Like, think about things like Mika with the subtle transparency. And, you know, I, I just think the whole thing, uh, you know, it, it, it's obvious that this is one of the key things they've been going for. They mentioned here something about, uh, it's here, softening formally intimidating UI. So a good example of this that I talked about in the last Windows 11 build stream, which was build 22,000.71, I think, correct me if I'm wrong. But... One of the things they changed were those really annoying, obnoxious, um, you know, low power dialog boxes. You know, if your battery was running out on a laptop, you'd literally get this full screen 
little dialogue message that would take up your whole screen which actually it was introduced in Windows 8 and it was always really obnoxious and you know you couldn't click or interact with anything until you got rid of this message so they actually changed that and now in in newer builds of 11 it's now a tiny little dialogue box so again it's just it's not as I agree with this it's not as intimidating not as obnoxious I'm just gonna have a pause to have a drink and have a look at what's going on in chat so Orbitron says I've seen I've been seeing very mixed opinions on Windows 11 and yeah I mean this is always true I think with Windows when it's still in development it's very polarizing isn't it because in reality none of us know really what the final product is going to be like I mean we can make assumptions about what's going to be there but we don't know so you know there are features that will usually come and go and yeah it can be very polarizing um So, Eon says, glad to hear they changed the battery message. Seems that they're going for low-hanging fruit with some new features. Long overdue. Yeah, it's nice, isn't it? And I think you're right. Long overdue is something, again, I would agree with. I think a lot of these changes should have happened much sooner. They should have happened in Windows 10, but for whatever reason, they haven't. And I mean, you know, I, I don't... I've not researched into the development of Windows 10 in a lot of detail. Not, you know, I've not done a series on it or anything. So, I don't know what the priorities were, but I really don't think... It doesn't seem like... Um, the UI was a major priority. I mean, again, let me know what you guys think. I, I mean, I know they changed the UI with Windows 10. I know they got rid of the start screen and, you know, they got, to me, it seems like the goal was get rid of all of the UI that people were complaining about in Windows 8 and 8.1. Don't worry about what you replace it with. Just get rid of it. That's what it seems like to me. But again, I could be completely wrong. So I don't think it was a priority. Um, yeah. Just going to top up my tea one second, excuse me. I don't know if anyone else here does live streams, but it's always a bit weird because it, it feels like you're talking... I mean, I know I'm not talking to myself, but if you just, like, imagine seeing what's happening from the outside, I'm literally just in a room talking to myself, which is, which is a bit weird if I think about it too much. But obviously, I'm glad that you guys are here and that I'm not just talking to myself definitely makes it much much more uh, exciting okay so let's uh go on to the next bit here um so the next section they're talking about the pandemic again so again i'm gonna skip this i won't read out absolutely everything and this is more waffle about the same thing here and so is this it's just about again how it was very people focused and it all came from people's you know how people use computers in the pandemic Okay, so there's a little bit here about the new start menu. So consider the start menu. The cornerstone of the Windows experience moved into the centerpiece position after listening to people express a need for more efficiency and less noise when using start. We designed a cleaner and simpler experience that puts people at the center by prioritizing the apps they love and the documents they need. It also adapts to modern device form factors and enables easier access for all screen sizes from a Surface Go to an ultra wide monitor and actually yeah now i think this is one of the polarizing things right so again please let me know because i'm interested what your guys opinions are on this so are we in favor of start being in the center by default or are we in favor of start being left aligned by default personally to me i think left aligned by default i think you know in terms of what people expect from windows left aligned now obviously they and they've touched on this here i think one of the main reasons they changed it was less for as aesthetic reasons it was more for functionality and they're talking about for example people using ultra wide monitors so if you have start center aligned that means if you have for example an ultra wide monitor you don't have to take your mouse and move it all the way into the left hand corner of your screen which would be in terms of mouse travel that'd be a very long you know movement wouldn't it if it's just going to be moving it you know pretty much vertically to the bottom then it's you know it's a lot easier uh so yeah what do you guys think by the i mean by default anyway i think by default left aligned but it's interesting that they you know change the defaults gareth says love centered start sky says left all the way still says left yeah flame point like on the left yeah so again look polarizing same same with you guys here polarizing it's interesting, isn't it? Because there are lots of different viewpoints on it, and it just depends what you prioritise as to what you think is the best thing to do. 
Um, so yeah, I thought that was interesting. Um, okay, so at Microsoft, these design decisions are not taken lightly. The team obsessed over every pixel. We updated the start logo to align with our new visual language and leveraged animations to add delight and confidence to the interaction. We were also intentional with the choice of the wallpaper imagery, which welcomes you on boot and complements the new center alignment to make your experience more balanced and focused. We want your journey into Windows 11 to be literally centered from the start. Nice pun. And yeah, this is interesting, isn't it? Because yeah, if you look at a lot of these wallpapers, and obviously they've got screenshots here, the wallpapers do do that, don't they? They complement the position of start, right? Because like the main features of the wallpaper are towards the center bottom for a lot of these wallpapers anyway. So again, it just goes to show like things that you wouldn't usually think about. Like I, I would not have thought about this. I would have just assumed that someone said, can someone please go and design us some wallpapers and we'll pick the ones we like. But you know, actual thought has gone into this as to what wallpapers they chose to complement where they have positioned, again by default, the start menu. So interesting, I think. Again, it could just be me. I mean, please let me know if you're bored by this, but I think it's interesting. Um, okay, so I think we're almost finished. Um, so what are we saying here? I've, again, I've not read this, so I'm not sure. Uh, One-click interactions. That doesn't seem that interesting, really. What else? Uh, there, they're just talking about design language. Ooh, this is nice. Look at this. They've showed lots of different new design things. Iconography. Nice, love that. Okay, what about this last bit? So, how do you build a product for over a billion people with diverse and unique needs? You listen, iterate, and adapt. Through customer insights, we made Windows 11 more human and welcoming by softening edges, reducing clutter, and designing for consistency. These changes also elevate self-expression through new materials and typefaces, a refreshed color palette, and new wallpapers and theme packs designed to appeal to a broad range of tastes. And again, this comes back to that whole calming thing, I think, doesn't it? So soft edges or rounded corners, again, very calming. Squares can be a bit imposing, can't they? Sharp edges can put you a bit on edge, if you pardon the pun. Although, personally, I always like the square edges. Again, let me know what you guys think. I quite like that look. Um, with Windows 11, we see a shift from technology that is simply functional to technology that is emotional, human, and deeply personal. Windows is more than just an operating system. It's a fabric woven into our lives that brings us closer to everything we love and helps us create and connect. Interesting. And my stream has apparently just died. I hope that's not YouTube again. So actually, I'm just going to stop for a minute in case... YouTube has decided to die. Let's just actually check that that's not happened. I don't think it has. I think it's just my chat on here. Uh, let's see. Yeah, I think we're okay, aren't we? Just give me a yes, guys, if you're still here. I think it was just my, uh, my iPad that was being uh, a bit funny there. Okay, right. Let's see what people's opinions here. Um... So Orbitron says they should have an option for square or rounded corners. Flame point. Um, my keyboard is annoying and has the Windows key on the right. On the left is the FN key. Oh, that is annoying, isn't it? Gum says I'm a bit divided. I like the rounded corners, but the square ones are beautiful too. Yeah, I mean, there are pros and cons to both, aren't there? And again, it's a very personal choice, isn't it? And, and you literally cannot please everyone. Although what Orbitron said, this is a good point, And Microsoft have done this plenty of times in the past, right? So to give users an option. So obviously with where they play, where the user wants to place the start button, that is an option in Windows 11. But for example, they have removed the option to use the Windows 10 start menu. So they've taken away that option. But I think giving users a choice is definitely a good thing, isn't it? And like I said, they've done it many times before. So for example, in, was it in Vista where you could switch back to the classic start menu or did they remove that in Vista? I can't remember now that I've said that. Might have been XP that I'm talking about. So XP obviously introduced a new start menu, but you did have the choice if you wanted to, excuse me, to use the Windows 9X start menu. So there have been plenty of times where Microsoft have given choice and plenty of times when they haven't. For example, Windows 8, you didn't get a choice. You got the start screen and that was it. So it's interesting. I guess it kind of depends on who's in charge, doesn't it? Which is not, not really good for consistency, but there we go.
Ah, okay, so Dominic and Xena say Vista. Oh, yeah. Thanks for that. Um, right. So Sheik says, I hated rounded corners at first. Ooh, that's a very, that's very extreme, isn't it? Why did you hate them? But I don't even notice it now. Interesting. Orbitron again, yeah, making live tiles an option would also be pretty cool. I mean, yeah, for example, I always loved live tiles. And I think actually live tiles, uh, if they put, if they put more effort into developing them, then I think they could have been really useful. But it just seems like what happened was someone had this great idea when Windows 8 came out about live tiles, and then nothing happened. They didn't really get any updates in the future, right? It was just what, whatever the first iteration of live tiles was. That was pretty much it. So in some Windows concepts around the time, I, and correct me if I'm wrong, I think I remember seeing some where there were interactive live tiles that you could actually click on and, you know, you could, for example, make calendar appointments from the live tile without ever going into the calendar app. But I mean, we never got that. We never got in any interaction with live tiles. That would have been a great thing to have got. Sky says, put the live tiles on the desktop and they'd be great. Yeah, I mean, I, again, I always thought that with Windows 10, to me, that would be the most obvious thing to do. I never really understood why they were in the start menu. I mean, I get that on Windows Phone at the time or Windows 10 Mobile, obviously your start screen was where you had your live tiles. But I mean, a desktop OS is not the same as it as a mobile one. There needs to be some sort of difference. You can't just shove them in start because, you know, they're in start on mobile. Makes no sense makes no sense um okay so that is everything that i'd planned to talk about for windows 11 so actually now let's move on i think providing that no one's got anything else they want to talk about with windows 11 but please let me know if you do let's move on to our uh zubuntu little experiment so i will talk a little bit more about this in a second let me just actually go into this vm first so hopefully this is going to work why did i just press switch user I don't know. Uh, so, yeah, I'm just checking that that's actually showing up for you. Yes, it is. Let me just log in here. Um, okay, so basically, and I'm going to start at the beginning here, but again, I'm assuming everyone knows this and probably in much more detail than I do. But Zubuntu is a distro of Linux. So this is a non-Windows operating system. And basically, what we're going to have a look at is a little fun experiment. And it is Windows related. And actually, before I talk about this in any more detail, I do want to make sure that you're aware where this has come from. So Dominic, who's in chat that is currently moderating. And thanks, Dominic, for always being here to moderate, by the way. Dominic has created a script which is called Chicago Fire. And if you're subscribed to Michael MJD, he did a video on this recently. So this is going to be potentially very similar to what you may have already seen. Uh, but he made a script uh, that automates the install of something called Chicago 95. And Chicago 95 is basically a way to completely change the Zubuntu user interface to make it look like Windows 95. And I don't know why I'm looking at my screen because you're here. I did this last time. I'm going to try and actually look at you when I'm talking to you. It's a bit rude otherwise, isn't it? So yeah, Chicago 95 is someone else's project that they've made. The And like I said, it trans... It trans um, what, what's the word I'm looking for? Transmogrifies? Not transmogrifies. That's a Sims thing, isn't it? Trans... It trans... What am I trying to say? Transforms. It's okay. Look, I need more tea. It transforms Zubuntu into Windows 95 in terms of visuals anyway. So the only potential downside with Chicago 95 is that you have to use a lot of script commands in the terminal to get this all set up. So Dominic has solved this problem by creating Chicago Fire that automates a lot of that install for you. So if you're interested in doing this yourself, I've put a link to this in the description for the video. So by all means, check this out. Now, Dominic, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think this has been tested on version 20.04 of Zubuntu. So that's the one that I've installed in this virtual machine. It may work with other versions, but there's no guarantee. Is that correct, Dominic? I think that's correct. Yeah, so 20.04. And hi, Tim, thanks for joining. Um, so basically I have, as you can see, set up Zubuntu already. And I've done a few little tweaks here i've like customized it a little bit so i changed the wallpaper and stuff just to make it interesting or a bit more interesting so i have downloaded the script already which is here and theoretically now all we need to do is run the shell script in the terminal 
And again, Dominic, I'm probably going to say this all the time, but please correct me if I'm about to do anything wrong. But I think that is what we need to do. Uh, so yeah, apparently it does have compatibility issues in version 21.04, as seen in Michael's video. Uh, yeah, flame point. I don't know why there's a floppy disk icon on the desktop, because I don't have a floppy drive attached to my computer. So I don't know why that's there. Uh, so yeah, we're going to need a terminal, aren't we? So I don't actually know. Ah, there we go. I was going to say, I don't know how it works in uh, Linux. But yes, look, you can right click and get to the terminal. Perfect. So... Yeah, Dominic, that's, that is wise. Read the README file. So let's actually... I'll show you this anyway, actually, because it's interesting. So you can see here, we've got unofficial fan-made script for transforming a system with the Chicago 95 theme. Currently, only supports Zubuntu. So Chicago 95 is a theme for XFCE. However, it's held back by its terminal-heavy installation procedure and so on. So like I said, this is a script that will basically allow you to install this with very little user interaction so yeah um okay so let's just go down here okay so installation download chicago fire done that uh extract the downloaded file done that open a terminal in the current folder okay so that's what we've got here and then run the script in the terminal window so thanks dominic it's helpful that you put that there as well so let's copy that and then read the message shown, followed by pressing enter and inputting your password. Okay, so let's do this. Okay, so welcome to Chicago Fire, an unofficial script to do the transformation of XFCE into the Chicago 95 look. Before we begin, huge shout outs to Grassmonk and everyone else who has contributed to Chicago 95. Without all of you, this wouldn't be possible to do. You can find the original repo at, and there's the link. Again, I've put um, a link to sh the Chicago Fire GitHub page in the description. So I'm pretty sure, Dominic, am I right? You'd be able to get to this from that page anyway. The only thing I've made out of all of this is the script. Press enter to continue. Okay, and I'm just going to stop a second to just catch up with chat. Um, ah, okay, so Dominic is saying open the README in Firefox. Okay. Let's do that here. Firefox. Open. Oh, what's going on here? It's updated. Ah, helpful. Good timing. Okay, it is not opening in Firefox. Oh, it's on the GitHub page. Okay, let's try that again then. Okay. Ah, yeah, here we go. Perfect. Thanks, Dominic. That, yes, that is more useful, isn't it? Okay, so on the GitHub page, yeah, you've got the the instructions with screenshots, which yeah could be more useful. Perfect. Okay, so let's follow what we are being told to do in terminal. Let's just close out that. Okay. Right, press enter to continue. And then we need our password. And now the script will go brr. Love that. Now, I don't imagine this will take a very long time, and I think it's just a case of waiting for it to finish. So let's just do that. Enjoy the terminal commands in the meantime. Green light, I'm glad that you're back. How was your dinner? What did you have? Oh, and green light also says the new Firefox does not run on Windows 7 32 bit, does it not? I did not know that. Interesting. Normal cat, hello, thanks for being here. You're Nelly, right? I think. I think you're Nelly from Discord. Oh, and that reminds me, actually. I should probably say this, shouldn't I? If you're not in our Discord, come and join us if you're interested. So if you just go to windowsonwindows.com, the, all the links to all the socials are there. So if you're interested in talking about Windows and loads of other stuff, come and join our Discord. We do voice chats and all other stuff. It's great. Come join us. Does anyone use Linux, by the way, as an everyday operating system out of interest? Does anyone here use Linux? 
I mean, I know obviously people here are interested in Windows, but not everyone uses it as an everyday OS. Like me, I'm on Mac OS at the moment. So. Um, okay, so... I'm, again, I'm going to read out what I can see here. So, I have a question for you. Mozilla Firefox doesn't look that great in this theme since, you know, it's Mozilla Firefox with a Proton design. Um, so, instead of that, would you like the script too? And then we've got some options. So, we can replace Firefox with Pale Moon, except it now has cool Netscape styling, or replace Firefox with a browser that conveniently looks good with this theme. Or you can choose to just leave it the way it is. So basically, this is an option to, if you want to, you can replace the default browser Firefox with another browser that will theme better with Chicago 95. So Dominic, which one shall I choose? Option one. Okay, let's go with that. We'll do Pale Moon. Okay, so installing a browser that doesn't look like CRUD with this theme on, but first, choose an Ubuntu version. So we're going to choose two here, right, Dominic? 20.04. I'm just going to check just in case because I don't want to press the wrong option. <laughs> so Dominic, I'm pressing option two, right? I'm just checking. I know it's obvious, but I'm just checking. I'm going to select the version that corresponds to the version of the OS I've installed. Yes. <laughs> yes. Okay. So 20.04. Thanks for that. Because you know me, if I didn't check, something would go horribly wrong. It just would. Okay. So we'll let this do do its thing with Pale Moon. Um. So Stephen says, is the pair book real? What pair book? What pair book? Is it a book behind me? With a pair on? Okay, updating boot files go burr. <coughs> we are making progress. Okay, perfect. And this is a good sign. So we have a very nice Windows 95 themed installer. I love this. Look at this. This is so authentic to the original installer. Love it. Um, okay, so let's go through this. So Chicago 95 installation. Welcome. This installation program will install Chicago 95. Press the next button to start the installation. You can press the cancel button now if you do not want to install Chicago 95 at this time. And look, we've even got a good old 95 graphic here. Thank you very much, Angel, for the donation, by the way. And that reminds me, actually, thank you to whoever it was. I'm sorry, I can't remember, but please remind me if you're still here. Someone also donated earlier, and I forgot to mention this, but thank you. It's much appreciated. I don't expect it, but it's appreciated. And Angel, to answer your question, to vote for the next series, if you go to the Discord server, so again, go to windowsandwindows.com, click on Discord, that'll take you to a link to the server, if you're not there already. Go to the Discord server, and in the announcements channel, as a pinned message, there's a poll where you can choose is what the next series will be after windows 8 and i think currently windows 7 is winning that poll um okay right so so dominic said he recommends ticking everything so yeah let's i mean i would have done that anyway so we'll just choose everything here so we've got the theme icons cursors background sounds and fonts so let's go to the next thing choose which customizations you want to install by checking the boxes below and i think again dominic Correct me if you think I'm wrong, but shall I leave all this the way it is here? That's what I would have done normally. Shall I leave it the way it is, or shall I choose this option? I don't think it really matters. Bazza says only 39 views. Why? It could be because it's Friday. We usually get more on Saturdays, but Friday works better for people. So. Ah, okay, perfect. So we don't click that and then press install. And we have got the window borders already, which is a good sign. Love that. So we'll just wait for this to finish. And helpfully, my stream on my iPad chat page has crashed, which is not helpful because I can't see what is being streamed, which is always useful. 
go perfect uh, yes yeah, so we'll just wait for this uh, the Chris is in LP Linux on Linux when I don't know I mean maybe someone else should make Linux on Linux as a YouTube channel well, wouldn't that be good look at the history and development of Linux I mean I'd imagine that would be a lot more complicated wouldn't it if you look at all the distros and stuff that probably take your whole life or longer um, okay right so we've got this little pop-up here that's come up in front of the installer so let's read this so manual steps you're not done yet not everything could be automated here's what's left enabling the notification theme open the xfce settings manager and go to excuse me notifications choose chicago 95 for the theme adjust the opacity to 100 uh okay Okay, so Dominic says ignore this for now. Okay, I will ignore that then. Let's pop that down here. So we'll finish installation. Okay, yes, we'll set Pale Moon as the default browser. Uh, okay, I'm just checking if Dominic has said anything else about this. No, just ignore that. Okay, yep, yeah, okay. Right, so we've got Pale Moon, which as you can see has themed with the 95 theme, which is a good sign. Okay. Uh, right, please install the themes for the browsers that have been opened by this script. Once done, press enter in this terminal. Okay, so hang on. Do I need the browser open to do this? And again, this might be a stupid question, but I'm going to check everything because I don't use Linux, so I don't know if it's going to be very temperamental. Do I need to have it open? Maybe let's open it anyway. Okay, Pale Moon open. Ooh, the Netscape icon. Okay, right, so press enter. The system will now restart, okay. Okay. Nice log on screen, love that. Okay, let's log in. Uh, right, okay, so Dominic says you haven't installed Moonscape. Install it once you're back in there. So what firstly, what is that and how do I install it? Again, I'm not a Linux user, so this is nothing to me. Let's get this back open anyway. So um, web browser. So these are the things that were open before it restarted anyway. Okay, so what am I doing next? Is Moonscape the theme? Okay, right, okay, thanks, yeah. So it sounded like it was the theme. So again, I don't use Pale Moon, so I don't know how to do this, but is it gonna be in here? No, maybe not. Um. See, now this is interesting, isn't it? Because this just goes to show how user-friendly your programs are. And I'm not, I'm Dominic, I'm not talk, I'm talking about you. I'm talking about Pale Moon. So I've never used Pale Moon, but I, wanting to change the theme, I can't find an obvious way to do it here. It wasn't in settings. Is it in view? I don't think so. So how do I do that? Uh, check your browser history. Okay, well, history is here. So show history. And then what am I doing here? The add-ons button in the web page. Ah, here. Okay. So does that mean you have to go to this web page to install add-ons? That's a bit weird, isn't it? So are we in themes? Um, okay. Moonscape. Okay. Install. Okay. Ah, perfect. Install. Restart. Okay. Right, so we've got the Net Netscape theme. That's good. Yeah, the WinX game says it looks like 98. Yeah, it does, doesn't it? It looks like Windows 9X. And the fact that we've got a Netscape theme for Pale Moon, actually, that's perfect, because that is that is also era-appropriate, because a lot of people would have been using Netscape at the time of Windows 95 and 98 as well. 
Uh, right, so we've got Netscape theme. That looks really good, actually. I like that. Love it. Classic Netscape. So what am I doing next? Shall I go back to the thing that opened here and follow this? Or So do I need to enable notification theme and start button? I'm assuming, Dominic, shall I just follow these instructions? Okay, yeah, perfect. Uh, right, so enable the notification theme. Open the XFCE settings manager and go to notification. So again, I don't use Linux. So let's see if I can work this out. I'm assuming it's gonna be in this application menu. So is it in set, maybe settings? Uh, what was it called? Settings manager. Is it in here? Settings editor. Is this the same thing? Maybe. I don't know though. So I'm just going to wait for Dominic to guide me again because I don't know what I'm doing. So I'll just wait here. Sector Wise says the start menu looks like the classic version of the 5098 start menu. Yeah, there's. A, I mean, it's weird, isn't it? It's like a combination of Windows and non Windows put together which is a bit a bit disconcerting it's like uncanny valley isn't it it looks good though i like this i do actually quite like this it'd be great if there was a menu like this in windows 95 okay flame point says search settings manager in the menu okay oh and dominic says notifications is just in here okay oh look it's clippy love it now, obviously, I'd imagine if you were someone that used Linux to the point where you wanted to install, uh, you know, a 95 look, you'd know a lot more about it than I would. So it would probably be a lot easier for you. But this is just to show you someone that's coming from Windows. This this is, you know, my take on what I'm doing, which is probably not very good. Uh, OK, so we're in here. So now what do we need to do? We need to change the theme. OK, so Chicago 95. Ah, perfect. OK. Adjust the opacity to 100%. Perfect. And I mean, shall we put this in the bottom right? Make it a bit more Windowsy, or what? Why not? Uh, settings manager is pinned to the top right of the menu, I guess. Ah, okay. Thanks, Dominic. Okay, so that's notifications. So then start button. So open the settings manager panel. Ah, so we want the same thing again. Okay. So... Wait, what am I looking for? Panel. Wait, is that the same thing or is that something else? Oh, it's here. So panel. Okay, items. Double click the whisker application menu item. Okay, that's this one. Uh, okay. Click the icon option. This will appear as the icon badge on your start button. Okay, so double click this. Okay, and then what are we doing next? So in the Whisker Application Properties menu, click the icon option in the Properties menu. In the Properties menu? Where's the Properties menu? Ah, well this looks like what I'm looking for. Panel button. Uh, in the Select an Icon window, navigate to that. Okay, so Icon. Navigate to home user themes. Okay. So wait, how do I do that though? Is this not one? Is this not the right place? Panel button. Yeah, panel button. Icon. So then navigate to that directory. But how do I navigate from this pop up? Tell you what, this would be. This must be. It really interesting for anyone that's uh, interested in knowing how someone that's only ever used Windows and Mac can work out how to use Linux. Select icon from image files. Image file that. I mean, I know again. This I know this is not your doing, Dominic, but that could have been a lot more obvious. I think that was that was not a very obvious way to get to that. If there was an address bar or something, that would have been a lot more obvious. Okay, uh, so. Navigate to that folder. Okay, so I want to go to home user 
themes which i'm guessing is a hidden folder because it's got a dot before it but i don't know how to show hidden folders in linux so again i'm going to need assistance here how do i show hidden folders or can i just type in this directory somehow is there no way that i can just type in a directory because again that is not helpful if that's not an option right click the folder pane and click show hidden hidden files show ah okay show thanks dominic show hidden files okay uh, you click bottom menu select image files ah you've actually said this here sorry dominic i didn't see that didn't see that i was too busy looking at this bit here but yeah you to be fair you have actually explained all this here so sorry about that you have said it you may also have to enable the file chooser to display hidden files yes you've said that okay apologies you have said it so then we go to themes chicago 95 misc and then what are we choosing uh, navigate to that you may have to click pull them and you yeah okay contains simple small icon badges in different sizes you may have to experiment a little until you find a size that fits correctly uh, this contains start buttons that are used for the gtk2 version of the whisker application so wait which ones am i going to need here though because again i'm not clued up on on this uh, legacy folder okay Ah, okay. So, sorry, Dominic. I will correct that then for future reference. So, this is written by the Chicago 95 developers. Okay. So, this is their post install readme file. Okay. Right. So, then I'm guessing we just choose one of these here. So, let's just go for Windows. Yeah. Okay. Windows. Ah, perfect. Okay. Awesome. Right. Uh, right. And that was the last thing in post install. So, that would appear to be the last thing we need to do. But again, I'm just going to check. Is there anything else that I should have done, Dominic, that I missed? I'm just going to check, just in case. But I think that's everything that I needed to do. Ooh, look at this office icon. What's that for? Oh, LibreOffice. Oh, look at that. Nice touch. Like it. Uh, so, yeah, if you're just joining us, welcome, by the way. And uh, currently, you're looking at Linux that has been transformed to look like Windows 95 using an automated script called Chicago Fire, who that is by Dominic, who is moderating chat. And that's just basically an automatic way of, or an almost automatic way of applying the Chicago 95 uh, script to Zubuntu. Um, okay, so Dominic says you could optionally shrink the panel to match Windows 9X's size. Okay, so how do we do that on here? Panel preferences. Uh, row, is it row size? I'm guessing. Yeah, okay. So what ac actually, how many pixels is the 9X taskbar? I actually don't know now that I've said that. Why is it getting smaller when it should be getting bigger? Let's see if I can do it by eye. Is it about 26 or something? I'm going to go, just judging it by eye, I'm going to say, is it 26 pixels? Just as a guess, by the way it looks, maybe 25, I'm not sure. Does anyone know how many pixels high the 9x taskbar is? Dominic says, I think 28. Okay, let's try that then. 28. Yeah, it looks about right, doesn't it? Uh, yes, Zeno, I think it's probably best that we don't we don't dwell on that. <laughs> I'm waiting. I mean, I was going to say, I'm waiting for the first meme. You know, like OS first timer out of context, where someone takes a part of a video and just completely takes it out of context. I'm sure there's going to be one of those one day, and I'm going to regret saying everything. Uh, well, a anyway, it looks roughly correct, doesn't it? It's going to be about 28 pixels, 26, 28. So, yeah, there you go. Um, so, actually... Um, who said this? Still Lean P says, try comparing with real 9X. So actually, yeah, let's have a look at this. So let's actually see if we go to, I'm going to go to Bing images because it's easier to open the actual image than Google. Could we, if we go to Netscape Navigator, Windows 95, let's just see if there's a quick screenshot of this. That's not tiny. This might be a bit small. 
Although, to be fair, that's okay, actually, isn't it? I mean, it's big enough for you to see it. Uh, so, yeah, if we have a look at this, this is essentially pretty much what we're comparing here. So, I mean, the version actually, the versions of Netscape don't quite match, but you get the idea. So, yeah, actually, this is pretty good, isn't it? I mean, you can see that some of the padding is a little bit off, like the start button padding. And I don't know, I'm guessing that you could probably change that. Am I right, Dominic, or anyone that uses Linux? I'm guessing you could completely customize this button to have whatever padding you wanted. So, if you wanted it to exactly match the 9x start button, I'm sure you could do that. Yeah, so... So actually, I mean, for what this is, it's actually really impressive. And as you can hopefully see, or, you know, assuming that you're someone that actually uses Linux, unlike me, it's actually a relatively easy thing to do as well, to go through that whole automated install process. So yeah, that's, it's, it's pretty good, isn't it? I love that. Love it. So, um... Let's just see, so we've got clock here, yeah, so the notification icons are not exactly in the same place as in 95, but again, it's close enough, isn't it? I mean, at a glance, you would think this is 95, right? At a glance. Ooh, and again, hang on, my stream is frozen on my chat, let me just refresh that. Because I always panic when that happens in case it's actually gone offline, I don't think it has, it's just my, my uh, iPad makes it die every so often. Let's just fix that. Yeah, okay. Um, so then taskbar buttons. So from memory, these look like they might be a little bit too long, you know, horizontally compared to the 9x taskbar buttons. Uh, but again, I'm guessing that again, you could change this if you wanted to. Um, and then we do have a different title bar color, but to be honest, I actually think that's to do with the color depth. I think in this screenshot, it's the color depth that's making that title bar color that shade of blue. I don't think it's actually an error in this theme. I think it's just a different uh, color depth, to be honest. Um, okay, right. So Dominic says, check the pictures folder. Okay, let's do that. Pictures. Chicago 95. Okay. Okay. Ooh, okay, so we've got some wallpapers and stuff. Ah, oh, nice. Ah, look, we've got the actual 95 wallpapers. Oh, brilliant. Nice touch. That is a very nice touch. What are these for then? Oh, these are just the patterns, aren't they? Okay, right. Shall we set some? As, set, let's set one as a wallpaper. So, desktop settings. Do, 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 do. And then we want to go to... Can I navigate from pictures? No, so let's go to other pictures. Chicago 95, wallpaper. Okay, I'm going to do a quick vote. Which one shall we choose? I know it doesn't matter at all, but why not? Which one would you like me to set as the wallpaper? I'm just going to go for whatever I see first, I think. Whoever gets the first answer. And why am I on top chat, actually? This should be on live chat so I can see all the... Bubbles. Okay, thanks, Baza. Let's go for bubbles. Oh, wait. It's not letting me. Why can I not set these as wallpaper? Um, why can I not click any of these things? Wallpaper. What's going on here? Press open. Okay, now see, I don't think that's intuitive either. That That is confusing, I think. There was no indication of what to do there. To me, that looked like you could just click on which one you wanted to set as the wallpaper. Hmm, not a fan of that. Uh, right. So now I have these open, but now I apparently can't click on any of these either. So what's going on here? Change the back... No, that's the slideshow option. What is going on? Am I being stupid? I feel like I'm just being stupid. Why can't I click any of these wallpapers? Change style from none. Okay. Okay. Um, oh, okay. Well, surely, now, surely, you could just make it so that someone could click one of these images, and then it would just pick a style, surely, or might just be, is that too much to expect here? I think that's very confusing. Okay, tiled. Ah, perfect. Perfect. Okay, right. So that is the wallpaper. Okay, so now we should also be able to activate or use some of the plus themes from Windows 95. So again, I do not know how to do this, but I'm assuming I can get to this from the start menu somehow, or from the, sorry, from the application menu somehow. 
So, uh, let's see. I don't know what it would be called, if it's even here. Chicago 95 Plus, that looks correct. Is that right? Maybe not. I'm not sure. That's open to terminal. Ah, yeah. Okay, so that is correct. Okay, right. Um, okay, so we want to go here. And then I don't know what folder these are in. Are these, I'm assuming they're not going to be in this folder. No, they're not. Uh, so, where do we go? Are we going to themes? Oh, is it plus? Again, I don't know. Plus files? No, it's not there. Is it themes? Chicago 95? Is it in here? Oh, okay. So Dominic says you have to supply the themes yourself. Okay, right. So if we had the plus themes, we could set them okay so how's about then i do have the plus themes so let me quickly go and get the plus themes and we'll just give a couple of these a go so you can see what it looks like just give me one second Okay, and we're back. So I have a copy of the plus themes that I already had saved on my computer. So let's see if I can get one of these to apply. Uh, so I want to go here, plus. Okay, and again, I'm going to ask, which one shall I choose? I'm going to go for the first answer that I see in chat. Why not? Someone pick a theme, whatever you like. Yes, Gareth, it's very retro, isn't it? I love this. The Windows Classic look to me is the best Windows look. Okay, thanks, Flamepoint. Flamepoint says more windows. Okay, so let's do that. More windows open. That is not a good sign. Did that just crash? Let's try that again. Uh, okay. Okay. Right, let's try this again. So, do, 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 do. Desktop plus themes it was more windows open Ooh, okay is that meant to be doing that more windows breaks it Ooh, okay let's try a different one uh right okay let's try again let's try a different theme in case it yeah it could just be that one that's breaking it let's find out uh right okay let's just do baseball why not Okay, so apparently more windows, yeah, it was breaking it, and I don't know why. Right, now hopefully this will, I mean, it'll take a minute, I think, but hopefully we'll let it do its thing. It appears to be setting icons, which is a good sign. Did anyone ever use this theme, by the way? Because I don't think I ever did, because as Sky has just pointed out... It has extremely annoying sound effects, <laughs> like really annoying. And I mean, a lot of these plus themes have annoying sound effects, but th this one was particularly annoying because it was like you were literally in the middle of a game of baseball that you didn't want to play 24 seven. So yeah, it, uh, it was not good. Uh, and there we go, perfect. So let's just get these out of the way. I'm going to minimize that because I'll come back to it in a minute. So yeah, you can see that it has applied the steam. So we've got the cursors applied. The icons where appropriate have been applied as well. I'll just show you what an Explorer window looks like. I mean, I know it's not Explorer, but you know what I mean. So yeah, I mean, this is pretty good, isn't it? This is pretty good. A pretty good knockoff of the Windows 9X look. So the, the people that, you know, put together Chicago 95 we should probably thank them because yeah look at it it's brilliant if you if you wanted to basically get this windows look for free using linux there you go uh and yeah dominic let's actually open the browser as well is this uh oh that's mail so let's just have a look at a browser window as well oh hang on now it's frozen let's just wait for it to fix itself Mm 
Is it still frozen? Yeah, it's still frozen. Although, to be fair, it's it may not even be the virtual machine. It could be my computer, so I'm just going to wait for that. Second. Solar Strike says, how long do you normally stream? Um, It varies. It's probably between one or two hours. I'd say most streams are about two hours. What time are we on, actually? Ten past eight, so it's been about an hour. Yeah, so I'll, so probably, I'll probably stop in about 50 minutes when we get to o'clock. Obviously, I know people are in lots of different time zones, but probably the next o'clock is when I'll stop. Um, I think this is frozen. Oh, no, wait, it hasn't. It has unfrozen. Okay, right, let's try this again. So, web browser. Okay, so this is Pale Moon. So, is there any way that we can change the color of this part here? Or does that not change? Obviously, the title bar's changed. Stephen, thank you for being here. And have a good evening. Yeah, so it's not recoloring, is it? So that could be something maybe that hopefully someone can have a look at. Maybe doing some themes for it. Um, right, let's choose another one. So that's baseball, which is extremely annoying and I never really used. So um, let's see, are there any that are a bit more subtle? Not really. Um, I mean, maybe something like, I don't know, like maybe mystery. I mean, like I said, all these 95 themes had annoying sound effects, but some were definitely worse than others. Mystery is quite subdued. You don't have anyone screaming at you, play ball, every two seconds, like you do with the baseball theme. So yeah, let's just let this uh, do its work again with mystery. Do we have any mystery fans? Mystery, I did use this, I remember. I definitely did use this theme. It wasn't one of my it wasn't one of my go-to ones, but I guess if I was in the mood, I would use it. Zeno, that is a brilliant idea. A Windows on Windows plus 95 theme where all the sound effects are my voice. I mean, it's a good idea because it's funny. I mean, I don't know, I like I probably wouldn't want to actually use it because uh, you know, like listening to the sound of your own voice is horrendous, isn't it? I don't think anyone likes that. Uh, right, okay. So yeah, this is the mystery theme. Let's actually stretch this wallpaper. Now that I know what I'm doing, thank you to everyone that helped me work out how to actually do that. So there we go. Mystery theme. Love it. This is another good one. Do we get the screensavers? Do they work on here? Uh, wine is not installed and it's required to preview. Okay, so you can't preview them. Do they get set though? Or not? Does this work? Oh yeah, okay, so this pop-up works where you can see what the cursors are going to be like and so on. What about sounds? Uh, a play is required to play sound previews, okay. But I mean, that would just be a case of installing these programs, right? So would these sounds actually work? Am I right in you need a play to listen to the previews, but would the sounds be set anyway? Is that correct? So you'd still get the system sounds? You just wouldn't be able to preview them? I don't know if that's right. So anyway, that's mystery. Let's have a look at another one. Um, okay, what else we got? I think I may avoid space this time because I showed this in one of my previous live streams and that one is extremely annoying. Let's go for um, maybe another one that I didn't use very often. Or I don't think ever. The 60s USA. Now, if you like garish things, then this is probably the one for you. It's very pink, as you can see. Dominic says try out a terminal window. Okay, well there's one here, so this is the terminal window. Look, I love these. Like, the attention to detail is great, isn't it? These icons, all of these Windows 9X icons everywhere, love it. So, you know, they've really paid attention to even little things that have been changed. Love it. Anyway, oh, and look at my stream has died on my iPad again. I swear it does this regularly. There must be some sort of timeout where it just decides to stop showing me what's being streamed. I don't know why. 
Hello Dewars Corner, thanks for joining us. Uh, yeah, okay, so this is the 60s USA. Anyone, anyone a fan of this theme? I mean, again, I, I never use this, as you can probably imagine. I mean, this would be enough to give you eye strain, wouldn't it? Um, yeah. Uh, okay, so maybe let's have a look at one more. So what about the Windows 98 theme? Let's apply this one. And we'll do one more. Now, confusingly, the Windows 98 theme, um, or the Windows 95 theme, in the original Plus for 95, is different to the Windows default theme, which doesn't really make a lot of sense, does it? So, Windows 98 would apply a theme that was styled around Windows 98 with a lot more Windows logos going on, as you can see in the icons and stuff. Then you had the Windows default theme, which was literally the default theme for, you know, if you wanted to get back to the default interface with the teal background and stuff. So I always thought that was a bit confusing. Uh, Dominic says, spawn a new terminal window. Okay. Can I just do that here? Oh, okay. So wait, what's different here then? Is this not the same? What's the advantage of having a new one? Um, okay, so yeah, let's get rid of that now. So this is Windows 98 theme. And uh, Solar Strike says it's the first time on one of my streams. Well, thanks for joining. I hope you found it entertaining. We're doing something a little bit different this time as well, because we're actually using Linux, which has never happened before. But why not? Uh, so yeah, this is the Windows 98 theme, as you can see, running in Zubuntu. Love it. Uh, ah, okay. Thanks, Dominic. I didn't see this yet. If you look at the terminal, the prompt has changed as well to an MS-DOS-style prompt. Thanks for that. Again, attention to detail. I love that. I didn't. I, in fact, I didn't even see that. That's such a small thing that I didn't even notice. So yeah, thanks for that, Dominic. Love that. Uh, so again... If you want to get this look for yourself, then as a minimum, you're just going to need basically Zubuntu 20.04 uh, as what is what Dominic's tested it with. Chicago 95 is the name of the transformation pack. So you can either download that and install it manually yourself through the terminal. Or if you want to make it easier and quicker, you can use Dominic's script, which is called Chicago Fire. The link to the GitHub page where you can get Chicago Fire and all the instructions is in the description of the video. Thank you very much to Dominic for the suggestion for the video. And thanks for making the script, because again, love it. And uh, I mean, especially for someone like me that doesn't use Linux, obviously it would have made it a lot easier for someone like me, definitely. And you can see, even with Dominic's handy dandy script, I still had some problems, and that's just because, again, I'm not used to Linux at all. So I didn't really know what I was doing half the time. But look, even I managed to work it out with a little bit of help from everybody. So thank you for that. Yeah, and actually, Dominic, if you want to put any extra info on the script in chat, because I can see you put some details on it there. If you want to put like a post with any extra info, bits of info in, we could, you could post that and then I can pin it actually in the chat. So anything about compatibility and so on. Um, right, so yeah, actually, that is everything that I had planned, every main thing that I had planned in terms of what to cover this week. So, as usual, let me know, guys, if there's anything else that you'd like to chat about. I'm very happy to stick around until o'clock, and that would mean that we've done about two hours. But in terms of what I've actually planned, that's it. There were a few little channel updates that I wanted to talk about, so actually I will do that in a second. What I'm going to do first is very quickly go and get a drink, so I'll just be a couple of minutes, and I'll be back very shortly, and hopefully I will see you then.
Okay, and I am back. Back and refreshed, or I'm about to be when my tea's finished brewing. So, yeah, welcome to essentially the second part of the stream. So, um, yeah, I, I, like I said, I don't have anything specific planned apart from that. I was going to talk about a few channel updates, so maybe I'll do that now. Uh, let me just get rid of this thing here. Um, so, yeah, we're, in terms of channel updates, firstly... I just wanted to draw your attention to the fact that actually now, if you look at our subscriber build, we're now actually compiling, compiling Windows 10. So we have passed Windows 8.1, which is build 9600, and we're now into, I believe, the Windows 10 pre-technical preview. Can anyone confirm that? But I think we are. So yeah, we're on our way to Windows 10. So Windows 10 RTM, in case you're not aware, was build 10,240. So f when we reach, or in time for when we reach, hopefully that subscriber number, I will be doing, as voted for by you guys in the poll on YouTube, a special video where I will be upgrading, hopefully. And again, it will probably all go wrong, because it always does, because it's just technology, isn't it? Especially with me. I'll be upgrading from Windows 1 to Windows 11. Now you'll probably be aware that that is going to be more difficult than it sounds because in terms of system requirements you can't just go straight from one you know all the way through to 11 without changing something about your hardware obviously so it's not going to be literally doing it on one virtual machine with the same system you know same hardware all the way through obviously because that won't work but uh, i will do it and i will make the hardware changes as appropriate at some point during that uh so what i do want to do actually is find out whether people would prefer this to be a live stream so it would be more interactive or if they prefer it as a pre-recorded video. So this is the whole upgrade from 1 to 11. And also, please let me know as well if you have any suggestions on how uh, basically I could make it a little bit different. Because upgrading from Windows 1 to whatever the current version is, is a very common thing for YouTubers to do. So, and I mean, that's not a bad thing because it obviously is it's entertaining. But... I always like to try and do something a bit different. So just let me know if there's any way you think I could make it a bit different, basically, rather than just doing the same, you know, as what someone else has probably already done five times. So, yeah, just have a little, have a little think about that. Uh, and, yeah, and this was another thing. So still says, what about the subscriber showcase? So, yes, uh, again, in case you're not aware, the subscriber showcase, and there's a video up on this, it's subscriber showcase number four, the, it's called the most cursed windows install if you want to go and see the instructions but basically you've got until pretty much the end of this week so i think i said the end of july i think yeah i think that's tomorrow isn't it yeah so tomorrow is the 31st of july so i mean just to make it easier i'm just going to say until the end of the week so end of sunday if you want to send me a submission by then you can send me a, you can upload it to youtube and literally just email me a link which is admin at windows on windows.com or you can dm me a link on discord if you're in the discord server if you're not in the discord server just go to windows on windows.com and follow the links there and you can join the discord and do it that way and yeah as long as you send it to me by the end of sunday it will at the at the moment it will probably feature in the video I think at the moment I've got about seven submissions. So, I mean, it's not like I've got 20. You know, I probably couldn't do 20 all at once. But if I if I have, you know, maybe 10 or fewer, then I can probably just actually show them all in the video. And I, people that have already sent them to me, thank you for emailing or sending me links to them. I have saved them all. I haven't looked at any because I want to make sure that you can see my actual genuine reaction to them, you know, in the video. So I've not actually looked at any. And I've tried to not find out anything about them. So hopefully you'll see my actual genuine reactions. Um, yeah, so I can see people are saying, you know, uh, I've, I've talked about the upgrade videos, live stream stuff. I think what I'll do is I'll put, a po uh, I'll put another poll on YouTube and I'll just see what people think. Because I know that some people, when I've put polls on about live streams before, some people, some subscribers have said that they, they don't watch them because they're not interested. So I just want to see basically what the majority of people think. And I'm just going to refresh my iPad uh, page again because it's frozen my stream again. Why does it do that? Does that? Does anyone else live stream? And if so, does the does the stream on your chat page just stop every so often, or is it just me? And I get really paranoid if I can't see what's being streamed. I get really paranoid that like it's gone off and died, and I don't know about it. Um, so there we go. Uh, right, let's see what's going on in chat, actually, because I've not checked this for a while. 
Uh, right. Doo -doo -doo -doo. Yeah, so Xena says, yes, it is Windows 10 pre tactical preview. Awesome. Solar Strike says, why not both? Is that in reference to the upgrade? You mean as a stream and a pre-recorded pre video? I mean, you guys will already know this, but just in case anyone doesn't, if it's a stream, it's all going to go wrong. You know that, right? You know it's going to go wrong. But was that, is that secretly what you want me to do as a stream for so you can laugh at me when, when it goes wrong? Because it will, definitely. Uh, right. Dominic says, doesn't XP64 barely have any upgrade paths? I mean, yeah, so upgrading from 1 to 11, I mean, you 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 can't upgrade through every single version, right? So we're going to have to just stick to main versions or something. So for example, from 98, you've got a few options. You can either go to 2000 or ME, for example, but you can't, I don't think you can then upgrade from ME to 2000 because ME actually comes out, came out after 2000. Uh, so yeah we're gonna have to just decide what we're gonna do at specific points i mean it doesn't really matter does it it doesn't matter that much okay tech tech and tech says i did not understand what to send this is about the subscriber showcase um actually let me get a link i'll get your link i'll link you to the actual video that i posted and the video basically describes what you need to do that's probably the best thing to do. Let me actually find that. Uh, so, do 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 do. I'll post this in the chat and that'll make that easier, I think. Okay, copy link. Let me just quickly paste this here. Oh, hang on. I have just closed the chat window unintentionally. Let's do it on here. Uh, right. Okay, so I've just pasted the link to the subscribe showcase video. So if you're not sure what you need to do, just go to that link and it will explain everything in that short video. And like I said, you've got until basically the end of Sunday to do that. Essentially, let me just quickly get back to my chat stream window, which I accidentally closed, which was not helpful. Let's do that here. I want to go here. Perfect. Awesome. Right. Uh, yeah, so I'm looking forward to that. Um, I mean, in terms of the actual subscriber showcase, in terms of the winners video, I don't know when I'm going to do that, but I mean, it, it won't be, you know, I, I think there have been occasions in the past where it's come out like a year later. It's not going to be a year later, maybe a week or two, and I'll do that. Uh, okay, so Flame Point says for the upgrade video, they have two ideas. You could have two phases, one where you upgrade from 1 to XP, then one where you upgrade from Vista to 11. I mean, yeah, for example, that would be a good way of doing it, wouldn't it? As a way around that update problem, upgrade problem with certain versions. Yeah, you could do it in two phases. So yeah, there are definitely ways we could do it. Does anyone have any ideas for how we could make it a bit more interesting than just literally upgrading from one to another? Is there something we could do differently that maybe no one's done before? Because like I said, ideally, that's what I like to do. I don't like to just do videos for the sake of doing videos. I want, you know, ideally to try and make them at least a bit different to other videos on the same thing. So. Orbitron says, we don't want another Memphis situation. Took nine to ten months, I think. Are you talking about the video series? Uh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, actually, to be fair, nine to ten months, that's pretty good based on my track record, which I'm sure people like Sky will uh, be um, have very bad memories of. Yeah. How long did the Vista series take? That took about four years, I think. So, could be worse. <clears throat> Uh, okay, so Dylan says, I think a comprehensive history of the channel would be interesting. I mean, that is something that I could do, yeah. I, I Personally, I don't know how interesting it would be, but I don't know. That's just me, isn't it? I think it's pro it probably is more interesting to other people than it is to me. But yeah, that is something that we could do. Orbitron says, this is about the upgrade. So, uh, install an app designed for the OS you install with every OS. That's a good idea, isn't it? Like one that specifically says it's made for that version of Windows. See how long into the future you could get that app to still run. That's a good idea. Yeah. Uh, 
Um, Sky says install it. This is similar. Yeah, install a ton of stuff on each version from the time period of each OS. Yeah, that's another good idea. And then see how long into the future it would it would run. Yeah. Second, Repon Repon says, will there be an ME slash NT5 series? Yes, there will be a series on all versions of Windows eventually. There will eventually being the keyword. But hopefully, especially for people that have been subscribed for a long time, hopefully uh, we have made some strides in that. I've not had a hiatus yet since I made a promise to not have any more. So again, fingers crossed here that nothing happens. But like I said, I, re I really am trying to actually take this seriously and not keep saying that I'm going to do things and then disappear for 12 months. So... Yeah, Orbitron says the Windows 1 series would be quite short. There are only six leaked builds. Yeah, so I mean the Windows 1 series, for example, and there'd be a similar problem with, with the Windows 2 series because for Windows 2, there are no leaked builds. There's literally only the final build. So, I mean, for those very early versions, we can, we can still do series, but it would be slightly different, right? So the Windows 1 series would be more on the actual... I don't know how to describe it. Not like actual, not actual builds... I mean, obviously, we can look at the bills, but there aren't many. So there'll be a lot more history in terms of, you know, information that's not tied to a specific build. So we can talk a lot about, for example, what was going on internally at Microsoft, like in Microsoft at the time. What, you know, what the whole intention was, why they were trying to make Windows, where did the name come from? And, you know, other little things like that that don't really relate to specific builds. And then Windows 2, I'm not sure. That's probably going to be the shorter series because, yeah, I mean, the, there's literally the one build unless anything leaks before them. There's the one build. And I mean, what? You could probably do a, a little history video again on what they were trying to improve and stuff with Windows 2. But that would probably be very short. Uh, so, yeah. Right. Let's pour some tea, actually. Yeah. Thanks for still being here, by the way, if you're still here. Hopefully I provided some entertainment for you on this Friday afternoon slash morning slash evening, depending on where you are. And hopefully by the next stream in two weeks time, we'll have a few more Windows 11 builds, or at least maybe two more Windows 11 builds to, that will have been released to Insiders. So we'll have a few more things to look at maybe next time, hopefully. So yeah. Game Rapper, hi, thanks for being here. You are not late, but we did start maybe an hour and a half ago, but I don't think you're late because whenever you join is whenever you join, isn't it? I think to me late would, would mean that you'd missed it and I was just about to leave. I know I'm going to be here for maybe about another half an hour or so, I think. Why not? <clears throat> Jacob says, can you do a video on OS 2? Now, yeah, that, now that would be a good idea for a bonus video. That's something that could be talked about in some of the earlier, like in a series on one of the earlier versions of Windows as well. Like, for example, NT 3.1. I mean, I haven't looked at this, but I'm assuming there are not many builds of NT 3.1 to look at so talking about os2 would be a good thing to talk about there because that kind of came from that project didn't it it's all kind of related so. Warp. Warp 4. I love it. OS2 Warp. Like, that's an awesome name for an operating system, isn't it? OS2 Warp. I love that. Do you think they got that from Star Trek? They must have. In the 90s. Star Trek was all over the place, wasn't it? They must have. Okay, Flamepoint says there are 8 NT 3.1 builds before RTM. Okay, so there's, there's a few then, considering it's so old. 
Um, okay, and second says, will you ever install the physical 98 copy you have on hardware? Um, I mean, I do have... I can probably show you that. Hang on, let me show you this. If I can find this really quickly, I'll show you this one second. Okay, no, ignore that. I can't because I don't know where I put it. But I do have a really cheap, small, old PC that's compatible with 98. However, um, it's not very reliable. So, I mean, I, I technically I could try and do that. But again, this comes back to that whole thing about what I was saying earlier. I don't like to just do videos for the sake of it. I like to try and do them because there's some extra info or something that makes them different. If you go on YouTube, a lot of people just install 98, don't they? And there's nothing wrong with that because it's entertaining to watch people install Windows. But that's just my personal opinion that if I don't just want to like repeat, I don't just want to do that for the sake of it. I'd have to have some reason to do it that would make it different. Does that make sense? Otherwise, I just kind of think, why? Why bother doing it? Like the unboxing, the unboxing video I did on 98 SE, I did that primarily because there's not actually any i don't unless i miss them there are not any videos on youtube of people unboxing 98 se that are not maybe more than five minutes long so there are none that i saw that were in that amount of detail so i thought at least that made it a bit different and look my my video stream on my chat page has stopped again it must be i don't know is it just me it seems to happen regularly after a certain amount of time. In fact, I'm going to time it. So it's 8.37. Okay. I'm, I'm going to see how long it takes for it to stop again. Um, do, 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 do. Yeah, like Sky says the actual stream is okay. Yeah, the stream's okay, isn't it? Just for some reason, the actual video preview just stops and it just goes black and it looks like the stream's died. So then I panic, even though... Uh, it's obviously not dying. Okay, Game Rapper says, What do you think of other Windows related YouTubers? It depends really because um, people, I, I may not even watch the same ones that you guys watch. I don't know. So maybe if I tell you the ones that I watch that I can remember. So, and I mean, not all of these are specifically Windows related, but Michael MJD, I watch a lot of Michael's videos. And obviously, Michael does videos on loads of tech stuff, not just Windows. Uh, but obviously, specifically, is Windows videos. I love those. Um, and in fact, some of those videos, that's where I first learned about some things that I didn't even know about. Like, for example, this one got me. In his development of Windows 7 video, where he looked at some of the, um, you know, development builds of 7, I didn't realise till I watched that video that the system tray icon for the Action Center, or it was called the Windows Health Center at the time, is a lighthouse. Now, who would have thought that? I love that idea. It was a little lighthouse. Love it. And then they changed it to a flag. How boring. I love that though. So yeah, actually to answer your question. Uh, so Michael MJD is one that I watch. Um, I do watch some other, like I know of, for example, Enderman, but I mean, Enderman is controversial, I think, to say the least. I mean, I have seen Enderman videos. And I've, from the videos I've seen, I've not ever thought that anything is controversial, but I know that, you know, things were happening about using Microsoft accounts on Windows 11 and there was a bit of controversy, so. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, okay, I will, second, I will try and remember to call you Door. Oh, and actually, yeah, this is a good point. I mean, I don't know what it's like now, but I think probably in about 2014 when I was doing the Vista series, a lot of subscribers were very young children, basically. I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. I actually find that interesting. What, what is it about child, young children being attracted to Windows? That's weird, isn't it? But like a lot of subscribers were quite young. And like I said, there's nothing wrong with that. But I always thought that was interesting. It doesn't seem to be quite like that now. It seems like, obviously, I mean, obviously I've grown up since then, but it seems like a lot of people that, that got into Windows as children maybe in 2014 or before that have obviously grown up as well so now that we're, we're all like the whole demographic is now a little bit older isn't it we all are but yeah there was a time where it was really popular with children i don't know why why not uh 
Um, so actually, yeah, what other Windows YouTubers are there, actually? Does anyone, can anyone remind me of some? Because I've got really bad memory, and without going to look, I can't, actually can't think of any. Michael MJD does Windows videos. Who else? I'm trying to think who else. Uh, Billy Core, the Nostalgia Moore. Billy does good videos. Different style, different style videos, but they're still really interesting. Um, the Flying Scotsman. Again, he does videos that are similar in style to Billy's videos. They're, again, they do a lot of videos on 95 and, you know, really old Windows. 95, 98. So, yeah, that's interesting. LGR. Again, not not Windows specific, but uh, LGR does lots of Windows videos. Yeah, Bob Pony is another one. Yeah, there's quite a few really, aren't there? Yeah, Noah, exactly. I think a lot of people are in your position. Noah says that they started being interested in late 2012-13 when they were 9 or 10 and now they're 18. So yeah, the whole... Yeah, I mean, if I look at analytics for the videos that I put up on my channel, it's different now to what it was in 2014. In 2014, it would have been, you know, it would have been like the first group, whatever it was. Now it's like 18 to 24 as the most popular viewer age. It's because everyone's grown up in the meantime, haven't they? So yeah. Tyler says Draga one yeah again not Windows specific but he does a lot of good Windows videos and, and it's nice because all of these different YouTubers they have their own styles as well don't they so you know like if you're gonna if you're gonna go watch a nostalgia more video or a Billy Core video you know what to expect in terms of the style of video so it's good because you've got a choice isn't it oh yeah and by MC Computer Clan yeah Ken does good Windows videos as well and lots of Mac videos. So, yeah. Yes. I love this. Keep them coming, guys, because I've forgotten about all these yet. So Noah says Windows Central, which again is another type of Windows YouTube channel. So that's more sort of news oriented that's like more professional isn't it i guess more professional i don't know like more news it's like news oriented isn't it windows central i mean they do do build videos where they look at builds and stuff but it's a bit different isn't it it's not like a single person doing everything Yeah, in fact, Ken at the Computer Clan has started doing scam busting videos as well. That's interesting, isn't it? I wouldn't have seen that coming, but they're quite entertaining as well, actually. Uh, right, let's see. Did I miss any other ones? Fly Still says Fly Tech, but I don't recognize that, so I may not have seen any of those videos. Does anyone know Fly Tech? Billy O'Reilly, again, I don't recognise that name, so I'm not sure if I've seen any of those. Orbitron, yeah, Orbitron, yeah, you have a Windows channel, don't you? I don't know whether I've seen any, any of your video, videos, but I should, shouldn't I? I should look. I must have, surely, but I don't know. I should have a look. Oh, yeah, look, I missed this. Dominic says, <laughs> Chris Titus Tech, who I had a complete rant about recently, because, to be frank, without using obscene language, I got really annoyed. Because I was subscribed to Chris's videos from quite a while ago. But all he does is moan about Windows. And I mean, it's fine to moan about operating systems. or I do it as well, because Windows is annoying. But it's just getting to a point where it feels like he's just doing it because he knows that people expect him to moan. You know what I mean? Like he's just putting it on now and just making it ridiculous it's like all he talks about is all his twitter posts they just all moan about windows and i mean i moan about windows but i don't do it all the time because i'm not a you know not uh i can't think of any non extreme words to use i'm not a silly person so i unsubscribed sorry sorry chris not that he'll care because he probably doesn't know me but I, know I couldn't take it anymore. 
Yeah, Orbitron, exactly. And he he moans about Windows all the time and then finds any excuse to say, just use Linux. Because Linux is clearly better at everything than every, every other operating system. It's just very shallow, isn't it? Because you can't, it's not that simple because all operating systems have pros and cons. It's not that, so you can't just say oh, everything's better on Linux and Windows is rubbish because that's just not true. It depends, you know, who's using it, what they want to do. Techbone, yeah. Look, Zero Techbone, Tech Matt at Techbone. This is a brilliant channel. If you like tech, old tech, not necessarily computers, but things like CD players, record players, tape players, you know, cameras. He does loads of good videos on stuff like that. Really obscure things that you wouldn't, do, you would not have even thought existed until you've seen one of his videos. That's a great channel. I love Techmoon. Yeah, thanks for reminding me, Zeno. See, there's so many of them. Oh, yeah, Gareth says OS First Timer. Again, love it. That's one of my favourite YouTube channels, and I just forgot, completely forgot about them. If you've been watching my streams before, you'll know that I've got a horrendous memory, because I say it all the time. But yeah, OS First Timer, that is one of my absolute favourite YouTube channels. Honestly, I love, I love Diana and Phil. <clears throat> Yeah, 8-Bit Guy is another one. Uh, his videos are similar to Tech Moans in the stuff he looks at. You know, like retro, you know, stuff like tapes and floppy drives and stuff like that. Tyler says that they found me from Earth's first timer. Yes, because I... Is it is it the competition video where I submitted a clip? I was talking about Windows Neptune. In their, in their send in your clips video. When was that? That was about 2014, I think, wasn't it? That was a long time ago. I would have liked it, actually, if they'd have done another one of those, but they didn't do one since, did they? I think that's the only one they did, where they had, like, viewer clips sent in. Yeah, the clip competition. Wow, that was a long time ago, wasn't it? That was a long time ago. By MC says, I found you from MJD liking your tweets. That's good. Well, I'm glad I'm glad you've found me and enjoy what I'm doing anyway. Because yeah, Michael Michael does great videos. Gareth says, uh, Linus Tech Tips. Yeah, that's a popular one as well, isn't it? They do lots of tech videos, not just on Windows. Windows Expert, yeah. That's another good one. Windows Expert video. I don't think they have any narration, do they? They're like ones that you have to follow text. Am I right? Is that what I'm thinking of? Again, different. it's a different type of video, isn't it? Tyler says, Nostalgia Nerd. This is another good one. Look, I've just forgotten about all these things. Look how excited I am about Nostalgia Nerd. Yes, that's another great channel. I love it. Dank Pods. I, I recognize the name, but I don't think I've ever seen any Dank Pod videos, so I actually don't know about Dank Pods. Yeah, Austin Evans. But we could have a whole list of these things, couldn't we? Uh, still, I will try and watch Dank Pods. Let me write this down, Dank Pods. Because, yeah, I, I, I recognise this name, but I've not, I don't think I've ever seen any of these videos. Let me write this. Okay, what time is it? Because... My stream video has just died again. Okay, so it's been about 13 minutes. Right, okay, so let's reset this. So, in another 13 minutes, if it dies at exactly the same time, I know that it's something that's going on funny on here, isn't it? Because it seems like it's it's like a regular thing. I mean, I don't know what I'm going to do if I find out it is dying every 13 minutes. It doesn't really, like, what does that mean, but whatever. Right, did I uh, finish pouring my tea? I think I've got a little bit of tea left here. Yeah. 
actually this is a good thing to talk about has anyone got any ideas or suggestions for the actual live streams in terms of things that we could do or anything you think that could be different to make it more interesting you know any 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 ideas suggestions in terms of streams for topics or you know something about them that you think could be done better Gareth, I have heard of Toasty Tech, as in, I'm guessing this must be the same person, but there's a website as well, which has a catalogue of lots of different, uh, you know, old versions of Windows and Mac and stuff, and the UIs, if that makes sense. So I've, I've, I used the website, I've seen the website, I didn't know there was a channel, if it's the same person. Matt KC, yeah, that's another good YouTuber, who also does videos on things like Mega Drives or Sega Genesis videos, which again, I'm very interested in, so love that. Um, right, do 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 do. Dominic says video coll video collabs, video call collabs with other wind tubers. Do you mean on the stream? Is that what you're referring to? Quinlan Fab says Windows destruction videos. I mean, these are entertaining, aren't they? But again, this come this comes back to my whole philosophy of I don't like to just do videos that other people are already doing for the sake of doing those videos. So if there's some way that we can make a, dest a destruction video, but have it in some way different to what you can already find on YouTube, that would be something that I wouldn't mind doing. I just can't. Sometimes it's just trying to think of, you know, how to make them different. So if anyone's got any ideas, let me know. Um, right. Do, 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 do. Flame Point says other Linux distros. I mean, yeah, again, if there are any other Windows related Linux transformation packs or anything, we can definitely look at some of those on, up for that. The Who said Theo Joe? Still, Theo Joe. Oh, yeah. So, Theo Joe, again, I think Theo Joe is a bit like Chris Titus Tech, right? And he's a bit polarizing, but maybe for different reasons. I mean, he doesn't moan like Chris does, but. Uh, but I don't know what is it about Theo Joe videos. There's something I don't know. They're a bit annoying sometimes. Not always. I think when Windows Seven went end of support, he released a video, and and it was called. So it was like a really rude title. It was like I mean I know it was meant to be a joke, but I didn't think it was funny. It was like people that run Windows Seven after end of support are stupid or something something to that effect. Those weren't the exact words, but that was the title of the video, and I thought that was a bit rude. Even if it is a joke, that's rude, isn't it? Like, what, what's it got to do with him? What version of Windows people run? Like, it's not stupid if you want to use Windows 7. That makes no sense. Yeah. Thanks, guy. If you run Windows 7, you are very dumb. I just, I just thought that's, that's not nice, is it? it? Even if it's a joke, that's not nice. Yeah. Windows 7 says, I use Windows 7. You use yourself. You are Windows 7. Even Windows 7 runs Windows 7. Yeah, I was using Windows 7 and I thought that was a bit offensive. Personally. Right. What was I talking about before that? I can't remember. Was I talking about something else? I can't remember. Well, I've written dank pods down anyway. I'm going to check out dank pods. Does anyone else get any other wind tubers? that I should look at that I might not know about? That's a good question. Dominic was talking about doing collab like collabs with other win win tubers. I can't even say it. But how 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 would we do that? Cuz I don't know. I might, I have this complex where I think that what I do is not as good as anyone else, so no one would ever want to you know do a video with me anyway. Do you know what I mean? You know when like you you make something and someone else makes something that's similar to what you've made, but you always think that what you've made is worse because it's yours. Do you know what I mean? So that's how I feel, honestly. I feel like the things that I do are not, not, you know, not in the same league as a lot of other Windows YouTubers. I don't know. That's just the way I feel. Maybe I need to be more confident. Do I need to be more confident? NT Dev, yeah, that that's one. NT Dev actually, apparently, he, he got his name from one of my XP videos, which I thought was interesting, because apparently I used to name the virtual machines NT Dev as the computer name, but I don't have any recollection of that. But yeah, if you watch my XP videos, I did. I used to name them NT Dev, and I don't know why. That's where his name came from, apparently. 
So that was a nice uh, little reference. <clears throat> um, okay, right, so... Sorry, I'm just reading chat at the same time. Martin is asking which Windows versions do I not like apart from Windows 10. Oh, is that like a common thing now? Everyone knows I hate Windows 10. Um, ooh, which ones don't I like? Uh, I don't think there's any specific ones that I don't like. I mean, even Windows 10 has good things about it, doesn't it? I don't think there's one version that I can say is outright bad. They all have pros and cons. That comes back to what I was saying earlier about when I was moaning about Chris Titus Tech, moaning about Windows, you can't just say everything is better on Linux, for example, because it depends what you're using the operating system for. And I don't think there's a version of Windows that is bad, you know, that no one could get any benefit out of. They're all they're all good in their own way, good and bad in their own ways. <clears throat> I mean, Sky, that is true. I mean, if you really had to give a give an answer as to which versions of Windows are bad, then, I mean, in terms of what's the most pointless, then probably Emmy, isn't it? I mean, Emmy has no reason to exist, really. They could have just gone from 90SE to XP without Emmy. There's just no reason. 98SE. I mean, 98SE, that doesn't really need to exist either, does it? 98 came out in 98, obviously. And then between 98 and 2001 when XP came out, that's a three-year gap, which is the standard gap for most Windows releases now anyway, so... Oh, yeah. But anyway, I was going to say this about collaborations. I, I am up for doing collaborations, but again, it would just have to be something, like I said earlier, to do a video, even if it was a collaboration, I'd want it to be in some way different to you know what you could already find online if that makes sense like we have to do something different you know not not just like destroying windows xp featuring i don't know nt dev or whoever it is for the sake of doing that video it would have to be something something that makes it interesting although i guess having a collaboration is interesting by itself isn't it so i don't know i don't know Sky says 98 first edition was a buggy mess, therefore SE was essential. In that respect, yes, but it could have just been a service pack, couldn't it? CNN, this is a good point actually, yeah. Uh, time is moving much faster now, so one year, one year at the end of the 90s was much longer. Is this talking about why there were so many versions of Windows coming out? I mean, it, it was the acceleration of technology, I think, wasn't it? At that time was particularly fast with the internet coming into common use. And I guess that could be a reason for it to make sense to have Windows versions close together. And also because the internet wasn't that common, excuse me, the to get updates and to get new features into Windows, it obviously w wouldn't have been just a case of downloading updates from Microsoft. You would have had to have gone out and bought a CD with a new copy of Windows on. So in some ways, yeah, it does make sense. <laughs> Jacob says, do a video with Michael MJD. I'd love to do that. But again, what would we do a video on? And uh, my Michael, Michael, I mean, I don't know. I obviously don't personally know Michael, but he seems to be extremely busy with videos. Like he seems to have a lot of videos, like a, a tight schedule. So it would depend on if he wanted to, what we could do a video on, and if he'd have time to do it. Basically, but yeah, I'd love to do that. Right, what's going on here? Uh, quad Core, Vista was the best, so many Explorer features were removed with Windows 7. <laughs> I'm not gonna get into this Vista debate, I don't think. <laughs> I don't wanna upset anyone. Vista and 7 are both good versions of Windows, aren't they? They both have pros and cons. I mean, honestly, I think Vista looks better than 7. I think the version of Aero in Vista is better, personally. That's my opinion. 
So I'll tell you what I liked in Vista actually in terms of visuals. I like the fact that it wasn't just a default blue color like most other versions of Windows. I like the fact that it was more of a sea green, like a like a turquoise color, wasn't it? There was a bit of green in there and yellow. I like that. That was a bit different. Tech Tech and Tech says, how many minutes to the end? That's a good question. Maybe a few minutes. I think it's been about two hours, isn't it? Yeah, just over two hours. Maybe a few minutes. Has anyone got any last things they want to ask or anything they want to talk about for the last few minutes? Thanks for joining, Jacob. Hopefully I'll see you again. Have a good evening, wherever you are. And I'm going to say this again just in case, uh, in case anyone is not on the Discord. But if you want to come and join us on the Discord after the stream, then just go to windowsonwindows.com. All the links are there to the Twitter and the Discord. Come and join us if you're not there already. And hopefully we, will, we can carry on chatting when we're there. Still says, do you do PC gaming? I do, but the games I like to play are quite retro games. So I'm not really into, like, if you asked me what the latest game craze was now, I wouldn't be able to tell you because I've got no idea. I like to play games that were popular when I was younger. So, for example, I like playing Mega Drive games or Sega Genesis games if you're in the States. In terms of PC games, a lot of games from the late 90s into the 2000s. So, for example, Age of Empires, The Sims, Theme Hospital, Dungeon Keeper. I like lots of these old PC games. Roller Coaster Tycoon. Flamepoint says, do you have a favorite version of Windows? My standard answer for this is Windows 7 if I want to get work done and Windows 98 for nostalgia. So yeah, thanks for still being here by the way. If you've made it till the end, it's much appreciated. It's nice to not be talking to myself. And as I'm sure, if, if you've been in a stream before, you'll know this, but I could talk about Windows all day, so I love it. Dylan says, how did you start getting interested in Windows? And my stream has just stopped again. So was that another 13 minutes? It was, I think, it was. It's every 13 minutes because it last stopped at 10 to 9 and now it's three minutes past nine. So I've worked out that on this chat page on my iPad for whatever reason, and please let me know if you've got any idea, it's every 13 minutes, exactly it seems, the video preview goes to a black screen and I have to refresh the page to get it back. And I don't know why. So let me just do that. Um, someone had a question a minute ago. Yeah, so literally about two minutes, I think, guys. I'm just going to go over these last few questions. Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. Oh, yeah. Dylan said, how did you start getting interested in Windows? I think it's just because... I think it's just because of timing. So when I got my first computer, it was 1999, I think. So we got a Windows 98 SE computer, obviously because Windows is just much more common on computers anyway. Especially in the 90s, it was even more common. So I think that's just why. It was the new thing, getting a computer and connecting to the internet was the new thing that all, all the cool kids wanted to do, so I think that's where it came from. People just latch on to stuff that, that reminds them of their childhood, I think, don't they? It's just, even if it's something stupid like an operating system, that is just not, like you could argue why is that interesting, but if it has a link to a memory or your childhood, it automatically becomes more interesting for some reason, so I think that's why. Uh... Uh, by MC says what OS do you use I use Mac OS at the moment I'm using the uh, Mac OS Monterey beta at the moment do 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 right any more questions let's have a look Windows 7 says when did Windows 2000 drop support I think that was that in 2006 I can't remember I want to say 2006 off the top of my head I could be wrong though yeah look I was wrong 2010 thanks guys Okay, Doors says, why, this is a good question, why was your computer fan so loud back in your early videos? You tell me, I don't know, I don't know. The question is, I don't have that computer anymore, so the real question is, were the fans actually that loud, or was it the position of my microphone? And I don't think we'll ever know. I think, I, I think it did have loud fans. When did I get that computer? That was from, let me think, that was from... 
I think that was from 2007. It was an Intel Core 2 Quad from 2007, so yes, it probably did have loud fans. And yeah, Dominic, you're right, it was an internal microphone, definitely. Well, I'm saying definitely, I'm sure it was. It was either an internal microphone or it was one that was part of a webcam, a USB webcam. Not a good microphone, like really not a good one, as you can tell from the quality of the videos. Orbitron says, what inspired you to start making videos? The channel is still up. His name is Vince and his channel is called TechSnap. And if you haven't seen it, he does videos that are very similar to the videos I do. And that's just, that's literally because that's where my inspiration came from. So if you go to TechSnap and go back to, he still does videos now, but not very often. But if you go right back to the beginning of his channel, which is like 2011, 2012, something like that, maybe before that, he's got a little, like a little mini series, for example, on Windows 98, using Windows 98 in 2009 or whatever year it was. And yeah, you can tell, I, I mean, I think you can tell that I'm inspired by those videos. I think the way I like narrate the videos and stuff is like, it's the same, I think. Um, <laughs> um, by MC says, what video editing software would you recommend? It depends on what you want to do. I mean, I use Adobe Premiere Elements, which is basically Premiere Pro, but simplified and that's just because i don't need lots of the features that premiere pro has anyway and honestly yeah like i'd never use them i don't think and if i did i'd probably find them really complicated so premiere elements is just a simplified version that only has the most important or like the most common features but you can still do all the common stuff that you'd need to do in most videos you know like transition effects video merge you know keying you can do all those common things Sky says, what happened to your MJ channel? Did it get taken down? Yes, it got copyright strikes and got taken down. And if you don't know what Sky's talking about, this is because I used to upload music videos that I'd, that I'd created for, I mean, not just Michael Jackson songs, but there were Michael, a few Michael Jackson ones. And yes, it got taken down, obviously. Do, 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 do. I think there was another question that I missed. Oh yeah, Windows 7 says, do you have any uses for an old computer? Any ideas? Um, I mean, you could use it for basically anything, couldn't you? What about like a backup, backup device? Use it for media streaming? Depends, really. Do, 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 do. Right, I know I always do this. I'm going to say another minute because usually what I'll do is I'll say two minutes and then it'll be like 20 minutes later and then I'll be like one minute. So I have my own clock that's different to everyone else's. But yeah, literally, let's just say one minute now. Any last questions in the last minute? Then I'm going to go and get more tea and go onto the Discord. So if anyone wants to join, I'll come into voice chat, actually. If anyone wants to talk there. Sky says, <laughs> true OGs remember when the music videos were on the main channel. I mean, why did I do that? That's so, like now thinking about some of the some of the things I did like that. Why did I do that? That's so random. That's a completely different topic to everything else on this channel. I don't know why I did that. Dylan says, what do you think of Chrome OS? Um, I hate Google. I'm not even going to butter this up. I hate Google. And part of it is because I'm bitter that they did not help Microsoft get into the mobile market, which completely makes sense because they, why would they help their competition? Uh, but yeah, they did whatever they could. I mean, they, they did allow a YouTube app to be made at one point, but apart from that, which got killed very quickly, they did whatever they could to stop Microsoft getting any market share in mobile. And I hate them for it. And that's why I don't use Android. And I, I don't use Google either, unless I really have to. And I know it makes no sense, and there's no logical reason for it, but I hate them. I just hate them. I hate this whole idea of having a monopoly on mobile. But I mean, Microsoft have it on the desktop, don't they? So it's the same argument. It's just that I like Microsoft and not Google. So it makes no sense. <clears throat> Do, 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 do. Orbitron says, why, any idea why you stopped your Windows XP series for around two years and then continued it again? I think it's because I had a hiatus, came back to start the Vista series, and then people were asking, could you please do XP videos on this build or this build? So then I went back and filled in some of the gaps. 
because I think there were important builds that I'd left out, so I added them afterwards. Do, 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 do. Uh, yeah, and Luigi, it's unfortunate because, this is a good point, Google own a lot of things, don't they? Because they just buy out loads of things, which again is just a normal thing for large tech companies to do. So yeah, they bought YouTube, which is unfortunate. So yeah. Yeah, I don't know why I started on build 2296, guy. I don't know. I don't know. But, I mean, at the time I uploaded those XP videos, I, I had no intention of starting a channel. I didn't even think anyone would be interested in watching them. There was definitely no planning. It was just literally recording them. Like, you can tell if you watch the videos that there was no plan, right? There's no there's no branding. There's no background music. There's no there's hardly any editing. If there is any editing, I don't even think I edit, ed edited anything. Although, actually, I said there's no branding, but I did. There was an intro, wasn't there, actually? Still says, what browser do you use? I use Safari because I use macOS and I have an iPhone, so it's just easy because it syncs everything between the browsers. Basically, the main reason I use Apple devices now is because they do what Microsoft used to do with early versions of Windows 10 and Windows 10 Mobile. So for example, Cortana could read you all your, or could send all of your text messages and calls from your Windows phone to Windows to, to your Windows 10 PC. But obviously Microsoft killed Windows 10 Mobile anyway, but before they killed it, they killed lots of those features anyway. So they killed Cortana, so you couldn't get your messages on Windows 10 anymore. And you know, it was just, it was just pointless trying to use that ecosystem when they obviously were not interested in keeping it alive. So now I use Apple to do the same thing, unfortunately. But I mean, it could be worse, right? I could be using Google stuff, so cool. Could be worse. Uh, right. Okay, look, I knew it. I, look, it's been five minutes and I said one minute. Okay, I'm just going to literally answer these last few questions then I'm going to go. But thank you for still being here, by the way. At least I know that hopefully people are finding it entertaining and it's not just me talking to myself. Okay, so Gareth says, what are your thoughts on the Surface Duo 2 leak? Oh my god, I mean, this is a whole thing by itself. I'm, I think in a nutshell, Surface Duo 2 I'm really excited about because it looks like it's going to be a much more like standard capable phone that would that would be um interesting to m more people like it's going to have more than one selfie cam it's going to have an actual camera array which is going to obviously mean that you're going to get better quality pictures they've moved the usb port into the center of the device which like matches how it is on every other mobile device the only thing that i'm worried about is the massive camera array also means that there's now a massive camera bump and i mean it looks massive to me and i don't know if it's just me but if you look at the surface duo 2 prototype screenshots the camera bump is massive and that means that it can't close properly which is one of the features of the device it can't close flat with both screens opposite each other like how that doesn't make any sense to me so I don't know about that. I'm gonna I think I'm gonna have to like see it properly, like when it actually comes out in person or something, to work out what I think about that. Um, right. Any other questions? Do do do. do. Was there any up here that I missed? Sector Wire says Clippy should have replaced Cortana. That would have been amazing, wouldn't it? That that would have been such a throwback. Do, do, do. Dominic, there's a plot twist to your show desktop. Oh no, did I make a mistake? I hate it when that happens. Oh, as you can tell, because well, I uploaded that Windows 8 video three times because I can't stand making mistakes. Oh my gosh. Okay, yeah, so I am going to go. Thank you all very much for still being here. I hope that you found this stream entertaining. And I will hopefully see you not next Friday, but the Friday afterwards in two weeks time. And hopefully, like I said earlier, we'll have a couple of new Windows 11 builds to have a look around in and we'll explore those things. And next week will be the first episode, first build exploration episode in the Windows 8 series, which is going to be build 7850. Hopefully I will see you then. 
hopefully, thank you to the WoW Insiders, Windows and Windows Insiders on Discord, there won't be any mistakes in that video. That will mean I'll have to re-upload it three times. So yeah, hopefully that will all go to plan. Fingers crossed, as usual. And thank you very much again for being here, and I will see you in the next one. I will see you then. Thank you.